guys, hope you're doing very well. In today's video, I am gonna be doing my tattoo tour finally. This has been something that's been requested for most of my YouTube life, so to say. I've never really done a full tattoo tour. I did something a while back, like I think it might have been four, three, four years now, where I did something called a tattoo lookbook, which was kind of like a tattoo tour, but I wasn't talking or anything like that. It was more like, imagery not imagery like just footage basically with music and stuff um but i haven't actually done a full-on tattoo tour the whole time i've been on youtube i've done an arm one that was it um but these are just like really hard to record um obviously because you've got to talk about it and then you've got to film bits of your body that's hard to film if that makes any sense so what's going to happen in this video is i'm going to talk about the tattoos and then i'm going to put footage over it if that makes any sense and then tom is going to help me record that footage because there's no way i can film my back and stuff like that you know so i actually had to compile a list of everything that i have i don't know if you can see that but um yeah just in case i forgot something i'm hoping i haven't forgotten um i'm gonna film a video of an updated or i'm just gonna basically refilm a video where i talk about how many hours i've been tattooed for in my whole entire life and then i'm gonna do an updated but i'm gonna just redo the whole thing kind of thing uh video of how much i've spent on tattoos as well because you guys are kind of interested in that kind of thing a few of you have asked for an updated video of that and i could just yeah anyway i'm just gonna we'll talk about that in that video <laughs> so i've written it down in order of like going from head to toe kind of there might be some moving about but it's pretty much from head to toe so the first one that i have um this is actually a matching tattoo with my best friend yasmin we both have the same tattoo it was all like consensual and the tattoo artist was fine with it and stuff we got this in 2012 and um behind one of our ear i think it's this no, it's this here. It's the opposite side to my neck tattoo. So we've got a music note and a heart. Um, we basically got that because we like the same kind of music. So, well, for the most part. But she and I, wow, I said that really properly for once. But Yasmin and me have um, this like taste for music, which is like 80s, 70s dance, disco, 90s dance, disco music, R&B. And we love belting out those like 80 classics. Um, so like Jocelyn Brown, Sister Sledge, stuff like that, you know, like Luther Vandross. That's the reason why we got that, and it's something that kind of ties us together. Um, so we got that um, all those years ago, that was like eight years ago now, it's mad. Next tattoo is my newest tattoo, I think, kind of. Um, yeah, my neck tattoo from Heidi Fury. Oh, the artist that did the behind the music note, the mu music note behind my ear, I don't remember his name. <laughs> I know he's not tattooing anymore, so that's that. Um, but yeah, moving on to my neck tattoo. It's my most recent one. It's my most painful tattoo. There's like no meaning behind it or anything like that. It just looks nice and visually appealing. I'll leave a link to the video about this instead of just sitting here nattering because some of you guys have probably watched that video and you don't want to hear the story again. But if you want a more in depth of how this will come about, then you can watch that video. Let's move on to this sleeve here so this is a blast over sleeve and what a blast over is in case you don't know is when you have a tattoo over an existing tattoo but it's not like a cover-up because with a cover-up you want the thing gone you want the existing tattoo that was there before to go but with a blast over you're not so fussy you don't care if it peeks through the new tattoo that's going over it so this is actually a work in progress and i was gonna wait to do this video until this is finished but with everything that's going on i have no idea when that will be <laughs> let's be serious like i don't know when my next session is well i'm booked in for the 6th of june 3rd of june can't remember um but it might not happen so yeah there's no point in waiting months to film a video um but yeah so most of it is done i've got this bit at the top to do here as you will see <laughs> um but yeah so the tattoo that was underneath this was like a horror spooky kind of sleeve i had like a haunted house and i had samara from the ring on there i actually really missed that tattoo i might actually have to get another samara tattoo just because i like that imagery i love like spooky women in horror films i don't know why i just think they're awesome <laughs> um and then it had like trees in there and stuff like that graveyard um the reason why i had a blast over it was because it was 
not dark enough for me um it was like very black and gray leaning more onto like the gray side and it was pretty much like that since i got it and when i first got it i loved it and to be honest i still liked it it was just I wanted something darker and I could have had it touch up to make it darker but then I wanted something different and then I ended up getting my hand tattoo which is the next one I'm going to talk about and that was so dark in comparison to my sleeve it just it didn't look right it was bothering me <laughs> so this hand tattoo I got done at the Manchester tattoo convention in 2019 yeah 2019 um this is done by Sophie Brown she kind of specializes in this kind of black work style <laughs> um but yeah this this was painful i was her last client of the day and um we didn't have much time left like time was running out so she really had to go in there this was also a cover-up i had this like swirly pattern thing just here where these really black leaves are that was the first turnip or the first turnip curse that i had I'm sure most of you know about my turnip curse but I had a tattoo here that looked like a turnip and then I covered it up and then I ended up with another one here which is going to be a sacred heart um but yeah that's that okay fingers on this side I'll show you these ones just here like this because it's so much easier than just filming but um these two were done by I think Ash Hickman um there's no meaning behind them I just wanted some like lucky charm um finger tattoos that's what some people call them little lucky charms on their fingers I don't know but it's just a bone and a bow no reason behind them whatsoever. So we're going on to this arm side here now. So I have a rose right here. Um, that was done by Emma Arietti, but this was a cover up. No, it was a rework because I had a rose there before that looked like a cabbage and it did not look good at all. And then Emma would just like took it by her hands and was like, right, we're fixing this. Well, I asked her to fix it and she's like, oh, let's see if we can fix this. And she did the most amazing job of all time. Like she knows how to do cover-ups and reworks and stuff like that. She is so talented. No meaning behind it. I really, really just love rose tattoos. <laughs> uh, the next one I'm going to talk about is the skull. This skull is probably the brightest yellow. Okay, well, this, you can't really see it because like natural lighting is drowning it out. But it's still so freaking yellow. Look, so this has yellow in it. This tiger here. But then like compared, like this yellow has stayed in there so well. It's unbelievable. Uh, no meaning behind this. This is also done by Emma Arietti. I don't know if I said that, um, but it was part of her flash. I wanted some gap fillers and I booked two. No, I had ideas for two and then I was like, anything else, I don't mind. And I was sent a skull that she wanted to do. And I was just like, I love that because I love skull stuff. I love Halloweeny stuff. It's kind of girly as well because it's got like a little flower crown. It's quite nice. I just love the colour of it and it's amazing. Uh, yeah, so no meaning for that. And then I have my tiger tattoo, which is there. No meaning for it as well. Um, I just wanted a traditional tiger tattoo. And this one was done by Ash Hickman. And yeah, that's the reason for that one. <laughs> so the next one is my pizza pinup tattoo. This was done by Danny Cuepo. He was one of those tattoo artists that I really, really wanted to get tattooed by. I discovered him on Instagram and this is when he was sort of like on the rise, if that makes any sense. Like he didn't have as many followers as he does now and stuff like he started to get more popular because he was doing these pinup tattoos. And he was giving these pin-up tattoos, tattoos, and it was just like, everyone was going crazy for it, including me. And I was like, what can I have that's a pin-up? I wanted like some sort of like 1920s, no, 1950s kind of girl with like a massive pizza slice, because I love pizza. Because I wanted to make it kind of personal, instead of just having like a, a random pin-up on my arm. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but I wanted it to be like personal to me. It's about three years old now, um, but it's definitely like, one of my most favorite tattoos it's also other people's favorite tattoo because it's been copied a few times at this rate I, I give up on it honestly but knowing that i have the original is that's all that matters i have a baseball bat and a ball this actually has a meaning to it so this is by emma arietti as well the reason behind this is when i was a kid um where my nan lived she had like this field park behind her house and like we would have like these summertime barbecues with like my whole family and stuff and then once we had food and like the adults had 
alcohol and stuff like that we ended up playing rounders but because we didn't have like proper rounder equipment we only had like a cricket bat and a ball <laughs> and normally with rounders you play with like a baseball bat rounders for those that don't know that are in like america or whatever i don't know if rounders is known around the world but it's kind of like baseball but a little bit different um but we'd all play that and it was just honestly like one of my happiest memories sorry i'm just casually drinking this is just like a casual conversation <laughs> Okay, so into my inner arm, there's a quote there. This was done by a tattoo artist called Sam Childs. The quote says, in order to be irreplaceable, one must always be different. It's quite a girly quote, it's from Coco Chanel. And it's just something I've always like lived up to. Like I've always been the person, like when I was younger, I was a bit of a sheep. You know, those people that try and fit in, that was me as a child and a teenager. I never knew how to express myself and stuff. Um, I'm fine now, obviously. <laughs> I saw it, I think it might have just been on like MySpace or something. Like someone posted a picture of the quote and I was like, oh my God, I like love that quote so much. So I decided to get it tattooed on me because this is when I was like coming out of my shell type thing and discovering who I was. And in my opinion, I don't know, I just resonate with a quote a lot. And it just, it's one of those reminder things to say like, hey, be different to everyone else or be who you want to be because if you try and be someone else, you're not living a authentic life. So that's, that's that one. <laughs> so the next one is my Twister tattoo. Now I have two Twister tattoos so it can get quite confusing but this one is from the film Twister. It's a 1996 film. It's literally one of my favourite films of all time. I remember the first time I saw it, I was at my nan's house and I was just fascinated with it like i was like a kid in a candy shop with this film i don't know why i also have like this fascination with tornadoes and twisters and extreme weather not that i like people getting hurt and towns being destroyed like i'm i like them when they're in a field in the middle of nowhere and like meteor i can't say that word meteorologists like look at them and stuff like that like i've seen every episode of tornado is it tornado what's that tv show with reed timmer in it it's like an old, it's not that old, but Storm Chasers, <laughs> duh. But um, I, I love Reed Timmer and like, I, I'm such a nerd when it comes to extreme weather. I've seen like every documentary about tornadoes and twisters and all that. I just find them fascinating. Um, but yeah, I love that film so, so much. I've seen it a ridiculous amount of times. <laughs> so that's the meaning behind that. I just love that kind of side of like extreme weather and I love that film and yeah. And that was done by Sam Childs, again. I, that was my um, first sort of proper traditional tattoo. Like this was my first proper arm tattoo, minus the quote. Okay, so going on to near my elbow on my left arm um, is the Dubai skyline. Well, it's not downtown Dubai, it's the um, marina. So the meaning behind this, of all places, people are like, Dubai of all places, you've got that skyline. Um, me and Yasmin's first holiday was to Dubai. We went in 2015 for the first time and we had the best time. Like it, without a doubt, was my favorite holiday of all time. I, I mean, we've been twice, <laughs> but the first time was my favorite. And um, we walked around the marina one night, which is like this place where there's like loads of fancy yachts and all these amazing skyscrapers. And it was so hot. We were sweating from, like we were sweating in places we didn't know we could sweat, right? It was that kind of weather, but we were just having the best time. We went to this like yacht club and we were just like sitting, having a drink and stuff and just chilling. It was so fun. And I just wanted like a memory of that holiday of like, yeah, when me and Yasmin had our first holiday and we had like the best time. Um, but that was also done by Sam Childs. Now this is my second Twister tattoo. This is my Twister ice lolly. Um, I don't know if they're around the world or not, but I think they're, they're like notoriously famous in like the United Kingdom kind of thing. Like everyone loves a Twister lolly. Um, I don't, well, I don't mind them as such. I didn't get this for me. It's like a in memoriam kind of tattoo. So when I was younger, my mum and sister loved the Twister lollies. They're always in the freezer and I would always get mad about it because I was like, what, what about me? Like, can we have something that I like for once? Um, so that's why I got it. It was just one of those childhood memories where I was constantly looking in the freezer and there's always a Twister ice lolly. So it's kind of in memoriam, in memoriam for my mum who passed away nearly five, no, nearly six years now. Yeah, nearly six years ago. Um, it'll be in May, but 
yeah so that's just it's just a funny little memorial tattoo that was also done by emma arietti right my pumpkin tattoo i think this is kind of self-explanatory this was done by um ash hickman and i just love halloween <laughs> that's, that's the reason i just love halloween so so much it's my favorite time of year as soon as it hits september i get so excited because that's when the halloween stuff stops starts coming out in stores and me and Yasmin always go out and we're always shopping for Halloween stuff and candles and oh my god I love it so much I definitely need more Halloween tattoos the next tattoo is my lipstick tattoo the reason why I got this is just I love lipstick that is my favorite makeup product of all time I really went through a phase of like collecting a lot of lipsticks like the traditional lipsticks like the bullet lipsticks I now have pretty much moved on from those and now I only wear liquid lipsticks because I like the formula better but when I got this liquid lipsticks weren't really a thing I know that sounds weird but yeah this is quite an old tattoo well, it's not that old I got it 2013 I think I got this seven years ago so yeah I don't remember liquid lipsticks being a thing um, well they they were but they weren't like the matte ones they're always like glossy and ugh. the artist that did this was Ruby Quilter she actually is now in the US of A and she does completely different style she does like fine intricate black and grey work like completely different from you know you can't really see it from this <laughs> But um, yeah, I never heard. She was really nice. Just a nice tattoo eyes. Okay, moving on down. We have, oh, my Wally boot. This is from the film Wally. It's the Pixar Disney film. It's my favorite Disney film slash Disney Pixar film. I just love it. It's so wholesome. It's so cute. I've watched it like a hundred times. No exaggeration. It's one of those films that I always put on in the background sometimes if I'm feeling like a little bit low. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why, but it just brings me joy and happiness and yeah it's just one of those cute films um who did that sam childs did that one by the way i'll leave links down below to any artist mentioned I'll just throw that one in there <laughs> the star the butthole star this was my first ever tattoo and i've been asked countless times will you cover it up get rid of it and i can't because it's the tattoo that literally started it all it's awful it's misshapen it looks like a bowl but it's it's my first one it's like my first child you know everyone loves the first child a bit more don't they <laughs> but like yeah i don't know it was yeah it's a bum hole on my wrist but um this was done by a guy called keith i don't know his last name i don't know if he's still tattooing um because like i've said in a few videos in the past like when i first started getting tattooed i i didn't know much of, at all um and there was literally a tattoo studio down the bottom of my road across the road and there was a tattoo studio there. I just went there because I was just like, well, it's fine. <laughs> it wasn't fine. Uh, the thing next to it, we're not even gonna talk about because I'll get absolutely annihilated for it, but it's another butthole. <laughs> okay, so yeah, then my next tattoo we're gonna talk about is my perfume tattoo. And the reason why I got this, again, like the same as lipstick, I love perfume so much. I love smelling things. I love scents. I love candles. I love smelly bubble baths and shower gels and, I've got more perfume than I should have, honestly. It's a sickness and I'm always buying new stuff. I just love perfume. I love smelling good and I love people that smell good. I'm, I'm a scent person. Um, but yeah, that was done by Ash Hickman. And then I've got an anchor next to it, which never really gets seen. Well, I mean, you guys probably see it more than I do. I forget that it's there. Um, but I got this in 2011, I think. I don't remember. Um, but this was for this is for my sister um i just fancied an anchor there and i was like let's make it a bit more personal than just having an anchor there um so the peace sign in it was again some my sister said well she's changed her mind now but back then my sister said if she was to ever get a tattoo she'd get a tiny little peace sign so i got that and then the s is for my sister her name's sophie but my sister would never get a tattoo now apparently <laughs> so She's like, no, I would never get a tattoo. The turnip is next on my list. So like I was talking about earlier, I have like a turnip curse. This was done at the London Tattoo Convention in, it was last year. And I saw this booth, every tattoo convention for the most part anyway, have like this booth with loads of little flash, like tiny little flash images, like little airplanes, Harry Potter symbols, little knick-knacky things, right? Little tiny tattoos. And I saw the Sacred Heart, and I've always wanted a Sacred Heart tattoo. And I was like, fuck it, I'll get it in there. Because I had this gap here, and I was like, yeah, that'd be really cool. And it was just basically the outline, but the tattoo artist that did it, I can't remember his name, um, it don't really matter. 
um, was like, oh, I'm gonna make it fancy for you. So instead of doing the outline, he did all this shading and stuff and dot work. And it just made it look more like a turnip. Like when he did the outline, it looked fine. Um, but when like the dot work started happening and when I was finished, I was looking at it and I was like, that looks like a turnip. So <laughs> I can't get rid of this like turnip curse that I have. Um, but I'll probably end up either leaving it or covering up it or something, I don't know. It's not something that really bothers me because I wear a watch, I'm not wearing one now, but um, yeah, it's covered for the most part. My hand rose tattoo. So this was done in October of last year. So I had this one done in the March and then this one was October because I had this and I started to get bothered by the fact that I had nothing on this hand. So I went to the legendary Emmy, Emmy? <laughs> The legend that is Emma Arietti, I was like, hand tattoo me. Try and make it kind of look similar to this one. Obviously not identical, but just so it kind of matches a little bit. But obviously it's different styles and stuff like that. And this is a completely different sleeve and what have you. Um, she absolutely knocked it out of the park. She was lovely as always. You know how Emma is. I always rave about Emma. <laughs> um, but yeah, she did everything that I wanted. It was absolutely amazing. 10 out of 10 and then i have a heart on my finger i'll just show you guys like this instead of doing like an overview um but yeah i've got this heart here uh that was done by the same person that did um the heart behind my ear um with the admin so i got that on the same day kind of thing so i just got that there and then these two here are from uh, a girl called maria she actually does really nice black work tattoos um, I've only been tattooed by her that one time, but she's pretty good, you know. <laughs> okay, so we're moving on to my back now. Okay, so the tattoo at the top of my back was done by a guy called Mark Watson. There's a tattoo underneath that that I actually still liked, but it, the quality of it was awful. Um, so it's a heart with wings, and there was so much ink that had felt fallen out of it. I don't know how, because it healed fine. But it started to fade so quickly i don't know what happened there um so i had a hamza hand put on top of it i love this tattoo so much the eye in it is still like one of my favorite details in a tattoo that i have so that was done and then below that like the my back tattoo is kind of done in three separate parts if that makes sense like it was done miles apart from each other um and then i have a portrait tattoo a mandala no wait i had a live stream where people were telling me how to say so i say peony no i say peonies but it's actually peony so i've been saying peonies wrong for like ever because it's peony so i have peonies <laughs> on my back and um yeah this was done by holly astral um i managed to knock it out in one day like that whole bit one day seven hours on my back like she oh my god so quick it was painful at the time when i got that i was like that is the most painful thing i've ever gone through i've had my neck done since then i've had my hands done since then so it's not that bad in comparison of those um there's no meaning behind it i just wanted to fill out that gap in my back um because there's just like so much space and i was just like oh i wanted it filled out i think in the future i'm gonna get it darkened up a bit because it is quite like the design is quite gappy if that makes any sense like i feel like it needs to be a little bit darker especially with now like with my neck and my arm it needs to be darkened in places so maybe some of the gaps in the mandala just filled in black or dot work or whatever just fill it out a bit you know um i'm happy with it otherwise i mean i'm happy with it all together but just make it darker <laughs> um and then the bottom of my back is another cover-up i had a dreaded tribal tattoo yes i'm that old to the point where i had a tribal tattoo and it was acceptable and then i started growing up and it become less well there's not it's not that tribal tattoos aren't acceptable they're just like the way mine was okay the tattoo that i had before was awful let's just say that um but i had a deer skull covered up on top of it um and i love it it's cute Again, it's one of those tattoos that I feel like might need to be darkened up eventually because it's getting a little bit light in places. It's, how old is it? I think it's like seven years old at this point. Yeah, I think it's about seven years old, um, but that was done by Mark Watson. Okay, so we're going on to my side now, or my ribs. I have a tattoo that says Carpe Diem. This was done by the same tattoo artist that did the heart on my finger and then the same like music note and heart. What do you call it? thing behind my ear 
I think his name was Tommy you know. though. I don't know though. Like I can't remember, but I know he's not tattooing anymore. Um, I don't know what he's doing now. I, he might have even moved away, I don't know. I love the font of it. Like, he was like full on custom. Like he hand drew it. I think he hand drew it. Like he didn't type it out on a computer and then just, you know, like how most script, well not most, but half of script tattoos are done on a computer. But this guy like hand drew it. He was really talented, like, so that was that. No reason for it, it's just seize the day, you know, like make most out of life cliche the other side of my ribs i've got another cover up so i had these stars and then like skull cherries it's just taking up too much room like it was taking up val valuable real estate you know when you're just like i know i could have something better here so i had a cover up of this like sailor girl and then like a lighthouse and like what you call it like a coastline type thing um it's okay it's not my favourite of tattoos, to be honest. I feel like it, I mean, it, it was a cover up, so it couldn't have been amazing, but it's one of those things where I, if I could redo any of my tattoos, I probably would redo that one. Cause there's no way I can cover that up. So that's kind of why maybe I want to fill out my back a bit more and get a bit more darker. Cause then maybe I can go onto my sides and just put something black there, <laughs> just bigger and black. And then maybe just get rid of it. I don't know. Um, but it's one of those tattoos, I forget that I have it because I don't really look at my sides, do you know what I'm saying? Like it doesn't bother me because I never see it. These next two ones are like one of my, uh, like my tattoos that still exist from like my 18 year old self. Like this tribal heart on my stomach and then these like Chinese, um, characters. Now, before anyone starts pointing fingers at me and cultural appropriation and all this jazz, I did get these when I was 18, that's 12 years ago. <laughs> so none of this like culture appropriation thing was, it wasn't talked about because well, the only internet thing that was about was MySpace. And like, it wasn't, it wasn't woke era. Not that there's anything wrong with that at all. But anyway, those two tattoos are the ones that I want lasered off um, at some point. I've been saying I'm gonna do it for eight years now i just haven't done it like laser scares me a little bit let me know if you've had laser um but i do want them gone i don't want them covered up i don't really want any stomach tattoos to be honest with you not at the moment unless i've run out of room um but yeah I'm, i just i don't know it sounds painful <laughs> okay so that's all my stomachs so we're going on to my black and gray leg now which is my left leg the first one is a vampire tattoo. The reason why I have a vampire tattoo is because they're my favorite mythological creatures. Like if I could be any, fi is it fictional? Yeah, if I could be any fictional character, it would be a vampire. Um, my favorite TV show is called True Blood. It's not a thing anymore, unfortunately. Yeah, so I got it in that era of like True Blood and then the vampire is holding this necklace, which is actually from True Blood. It's like a Lilith, it's called a Lilith, Lilith necklace. Oh, and that was done by Mark Watson. And then I have a Scorpion Spicy Boy. This was done by Sophie, safe word by Sophie. I've mentioned her a few times. She's done my YouTube channel art and my social media art. She's just the most wholesome girl of all time. She's hilarious. She's an awesome girl to hang around with and just talk about stuff with. And she is a sweetheart, um, but she has only been tattooing for it's a bit longer now well we'll with all everything that's going on she's been tattooing for about six seven eight months right and she knocked out that scorpion for me oh, it's so good i'm so so proud of her because i've been sort of following her work and stuff for a few years now and she's the way she's like progressed and she's gone from like an artist to now a tattoo artist and she makes like designs for clothing and oh she's amazing um so yeah she did that for me she also did this knife tattoo for me so these two were like part of flash but she customized the knife tattoo for me to have like a little skull boy in it i mean it's crispy the line work is crispy it's smooth it's amazing she did such a good job with it and um i definitely hope to get tattooed by her again at some point because i just yeah she's just so cool <laughs> so then i have my craft tattoo this is done by keely rutherford um keely is normally known for doing like really colorful kawaii bits <laughs> she does bits that are colorful but this is from like it's elements from the film the craft it's like one of my favorite horror films i kind of grew up watching it and stuff like that and um it has the quote we are the weirdos mister which is one of the most fo famous quotes from the film 
and I just kind of vibe with it. The next tattoo I'm going to talk about is my camera portrait lady. I actually got this at the Brussels tattoo convention. It was my first ever tattoo convention abroad and um, I've walked past the tattoo artist booth a few times. His name's Hugo Goon and I could not get this tattoo out of my head. There was two tattoos. There was one that was just the camera and then there was the portrait with holding the camera. And I could not get it out of my head and that's when I know I love something because I can't stop thinking about it and I was thinking about it all day and I was like okay Yasmin I've got to see if this guy will tattoo in me because it's quite a meaningful tattoo for me. I've always wanted like a camera tattoo. I think I may still get a separate camera tattoo but I've always wanted a tattoo to do with cameras because ever since I was younger I've loved having cameras in my life and then obviously with my job like YouTube I'm using a camera now. I don't know I just really really liked it. I love the style of it and I liked how it was black work and He's a really good tattoo artist as well. He's pretty underrated. And then the last one that is on my leg, I believe, is this tattoo. There's a skull and barbed wire. This is kind of like a 90s themed tattoo for me because I was born literally two weeks into the 90s. And a barbed wire tattoo is very 90s, right? I got this in Amsterdam by a tattoo artist called Anna. Again, such a sweet lady. She was awesome to be tattooed by. Just friendly, gentle, you know, just good vibes all around. Um, but yeah, I got that in Amsterdam in 2019, I believe. Yeah, oh, I love it. It's so freaking cool. It's just, oh, love it. Okay, we're moving on to my right leg now. This is the last body part <laughs> that I have to talk about. So my Day of the Dead portrait was done by Mark Watson. This was my first realism tattoo. Sorry, excuse me. But yeah, I have just like a fascination with day of the dead the celebration i think it's just beautiful um but yeah i got that oh my God, was like eight years ago now at this point um but that was done by mark watson and then i have my gravestone tattoo from emma arietti i got this for my 30th birthday kind of thing well it was a few days after but it was for my 30th birthday and it just says rest in peace my youth because like i felt like turning 30 like that was saying goodbye to like my younger years even though nothing feels different actually life is a bit better since turning 30 i'm not gonna lie minus the rona yeah i got that and i just pretty much said to emma hey i just want a gravestone that says rest in peace my youth and then she added all the extra elements around it which is awesome i loved it so much like i saw it i was just like this is everything I wanted and more. And then we have my Snow White tattoo. This again is from Emma Arietti. She's done most of my leg tattoos at this point. Um, but yeah, my Snow White tattoo uh, is for my nan who passed away. Oh my gosh, I was 19. So that was like 11 years ago. Um, but she absolutely loves Snow White. And I remember watching it with her and stuff like that. So it's like a memorial tattoo. And yeah, it's just sweet and wholesome content <laughs> and then we have my alien tattoo this was done by sam whitehead this oh man i got this at the brighton tattoo convention and 10 out of 10 like i was sent the design on the day just the outline and i was just like holy fuck that is amazing like i wanted an alien tattoo because i love alien -y kind of things like sci-fi conspiracy theories like i'm all into that kind of weird stuff so this kind of suits me in that way and it, I'm just looking at it now. <laughs> but this is like the most colourful tattoo I've ever had. It's still so bright and vibrant. I got this two, is it two years ago now? Three years ago? I don't remember. Um, but yeah, she is the cutest alien tattoo on the planet. Fight me. I will fight anyone that says different, including Tom. And then I have an eyeball tattoo that is from Emma Arietti. This Oh, how this turned out so basically Emma has like this flash board in her tattoo studio with stuff that she'll kind of redo it's like a proper flash sheet like an old school flash sheet that gets reused and stuff um but she'll make it a bit different with colors and stuff like that um so I was going in there thinking it'll just be like a crying eyeball with blue tears but then one of the, but then the shop manager I think she is or like a shop assistant um come over and she was like you should do blood tears and we were like fuck yes because i'm all about the horror life i'm all about the spooky life and when she said blood tears i was like yes do it and i swear this is like my favorite tattoo one of my favorite tattoos like it's high up there in the list of favorite right the way it turned out oh it's so like spooky and bloodshot and just gnarly i love it um it's so good there's a gap though that's bugging me um can i get my leg up there's a gap just here that's 
bugging me so much. I cannot wait until the Rona is over because like that is being filled straight away. It's pissing me off. And then we have my B tattoo. This was done by Jodie Dorbar at my first ever tattoo convention that I went to, which was the London Tattoo Collective. And it basically just had English, or was it British? I can't remember if it was just England tattoo artist. No, because Isnal Barbosa was there. So he's from Ireland. So I think it was just Britain. Tattoo artists were all there. It's not everyone that exists, but yeah, anyway, moving on, who cares? Um, but yeah, she was there and I could not stop thinking about this design. So I got tattooed by her. And then an, another tattoo that um, Emma, Ari Emma Arietti has done is my like rock and roll demon claw. I love it so much. It, I love the placement of it. So if I'm wearing like boots or like high top trainers, it kind of sticks out a little bit. Amazing vibes. I love it so, so much. Um, that was just a bit of flash, to be honest with you. There's no meaning behind it. And then I have my cinema tattoo from Keely Rutherford again. So like I was saying, she's known for doing colorful stuff, but I, the first tattoo I got done by her was like black and gray, and like spooky vibes. But then like, I just felt like it was rude not to have a colorful tattoo by her because I like love her work and I just love her. She's so sweet. Um, but I got a tattoo to sort of commemorate my love for the cinema and all things film. So I've got a slushy, a popcorn box and like a cinema ticket, even though cinema tickets don't look like that. You, you get the vibe though. Okay, and the last tattoo I'm gonna talk about is my cat lady face from Manny, who also works at Jolie Rouge alongside Keely. Um, so Keely had a charity day in memorial for her mum and like she did a charity flash day for the charity mind and this was like one of the tattoos that stood out to me the most like i saw it i was like i need that like i need that tattoo it's so cool i love the design of it i just love how it looked i was like that needs to go on the back of my leg and i have oh I just love it it's just so different like i've never seen a tattoo like this and i still haven't seen a tattoo like this like done i just think it's like super unique and yeah i just really enjoyed it really enjoyed it oh okay that is every single tattoo i have yay so let me know what your favorite tattoos are let me know what your least favorite tattoos are what are your tattoo plans are you excited for rona to go away so we can all get tattooed again i'm getting the craving i hope you guys are all doing very well and staying safe and until my next video bye